What's going on guys? Just a real quick one here, uh, just a small little PSA I guess or just uh, air some concerns I have around uh, just a small safety issue with this product in particular. Now I'd like to just premise the whole video with I'm not knocking this product itself or the guy that made it. It looks like a really cool device and I actually kind of want to get one for some of my own systems. This is the Retro Jam. It's a universal upscaler for a lot of different older retro consoles, as you can see, like PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, PS2, and 64. Now, the issue here is just more with how the product is used on one particular system and that is on the fat ps2 the launch model style this big one here now on the 5000 and 3000 series is what is what it supports it uses a, a mounting system which i feel that isn't exactly the safest method and it's got to do with the power supply so let's just scroll up here and start off from the start so this is the install guide for it and if you're not if you're unfamiliar with this product basically it solders into the board and it does a i believe digital to digital conversion from the actual console itself straight out to hdmi there's no analog involved at all and it just uses this on this little universal board now the gripe that i have with this one is the mount that they use the mount is fine but there's a few tiny little issues with it uh, the main one is its location. So here's the official install guide for it. Uh, and you can see the mount installs here. It's 3D printed. It has two small little screw mounts just here. They go, they hold in with just some normal hardware store bolts and nuts. They just screw in. I don't even think they're glued in. They might be, or they might be set into the 3D printed plastic. Now, as you can guess, if you're familiar with... Uh, mains voltage stuff or just power supplies in general is this is sitting right next to the power supply the problem that we have here is on these power supplies they're completely exposed because they're designed to be um, encapsulated by the actual console's housing making them i guess double insulated in a way but what we've done what, what's what's happened here is by installing this kit you basically just disregard that entire isolation altogether that insulation altogether. And yeah, as, as you can see, the board mounts here. If we jump over to the install dock, let's see if it's got a picture of it actually installed in the system. Yeah, so here's the device installed in the system. I'll bring that a bit bigger. It's mounted here with two screws here, and it's got these two inserts here. Basically, it's just holding this um, extension board for the HDMI port to bring it forward so it fits around the PS2's fan. Now, the only point of contact this looks like it has for holding this whole PCB in place is just these two screws here, My, maybe some tape or something. As I alluded to before, one half of this power supply is completely live, or well, should be considered live constantly if, it's, if there's anything around it. So if this board, let's bring that back up. If this board got pushed, like say the HDMI cable is inserted into the back of the console and it gets bumped, dropped, and it shears off any of these little contact points here, you're gonna have a connection between whatever's plugged into this, so your TV or you, with the entire primary side of the power supply. So I'll bring out this little cutout here. So yeah, anywhere in here you should consider live basically all the time. You have a big cap here, depending on your mains voltage, it could be either 330 or I believe uh, 450 volts or something. That's the main rating for it. But still, this entire area is live. And if you look down here, we're bringing that up. So here's the board here. And then right under that board is the primary side fuse. So one half of this fuse is connected directly to the mains. It goes from here to here and then to the power plug, which is over here somewhere. That's my main concern with this, is if this gets knocked, bumped, or anything, this board can fall inside and land on top of either the fuse, it can land on top of uh, anything up in here if it gets pushed in far enough, the main one is being the fuse. And another issue that there is with this, this board also has Wi-Fi, which is fine. Now, the problem that I have with this, just a safety concern, is it's just bump down to installing the gem board. Again, 3D printed. There's the little nuts that hold it in. This underside of this board has exposed ground plane copper points here. Um, 
also just all the components along the top of the board. As you can see here, here's the Wi-Fi antenna. It's one of these like, I guess, laptop style stick on ones that use double sided tape. And just a nice little coax cable there, cutting it off. Let's jump to the 5000 series because that's what it's got in this video. You cut the shield. This is the cable going from the main board. That's fine. Here's the mounting that I was talking about before. Here's the Wi-Fi cable. Now, if you see this blue line here on the bottom insulation pad for the power supply, that, that denotes where primary and secondary are. Secondary is the low voltage side. Primary is the mains voltage side. The, the wire for the uh, Wi-Fi just crosses completely over the top of the primary side of the power supply. Now these coax cables for the Wi-Fi only have super thin insulation. So I don't know, it's highly unlikely that it would actually ever happen, but there's a risk of it happening. That insulation being nicked or damaged during install, or maybe it's just worn down over time or something happens, right? You'll have current leakage or even just straight up just a connection between the primary 100, 240 volt side directly into this board. This board has, I believe, a common ground plane. So it's just going to go straight through this board, straight into the console, kill the console, go through the HDMI cable into your TV. And if you just happen to be unlucky enough that you're holding onto the cable, maybe you're plugging it in and the console's on and you push this board in or something happens. Uh, a lot of HDMI cables, the premium ones that you can get have the casing on them is metal. And that's also connected to the shielding on the cable. Shielding is connected to the ground plane on this board. You get the idea. So that's sort of my gripe with this. What they should do or what you should do. I'm, I'm not saying don't buy this product. It looks like a good product. I'm just saying if you're installing it on this very particular model of console, they should really include a probably just like a, a, a shielding material for it. So if we jump back over to this picture, you can see on the stock console, they install this uh, plastic barrier here to stop the bottom side of the power supply if it gets dropped or squashed or something from contacting the chassis of the console because it's a double insulated device. It doesn't have a ground wire. And just stepping aside for a second, a lot of houses still don't have ground, ground fault interrupters or basically circuit breakers if there's a leakage to ground. Like my old house in Australia, it only got those installed two years ago. And I know for some American houses, they don't even have them. They have the old school sort of just breaker if there's enough current to trip the actual breaker in the thing. There's no actual like, I think they're set to 15 or 20 millivolt leakage to ground. But yeah, so some houses don't have the protection installed. So if this did get shorted out, but it didn't blow something up, you'd have potentially any metal part of the console or anything plugged into this port, whatever, is, is basically live. So... Yeah, just jumping back quickly, like I was saying, to this shielding, what they could do is they could just uh, include a piece like this. Uh, let me open up paint. Okay, so let's just quickly rough this up. So imagine this, that's the uh, AV port or whatever port that was. I think it was AV port. Yeah, that's the AV port. We're looking at a cross section now. This is where the power supply sits. Power supply sits here. It's got all its bits on there. The retro gem, let's put it in orange. It goes here and it's mounted with its little screws. Um, and uh, we'll put purple for an HDMI port. Maybe I can visualize this to show people. This can fall in here touch here, get electrocuted, right? So what I'm suggesting to circumvent this. So on the stock console, you have this plastic insulator that goes here. So any downward force protects this from shorting against the casing, right? What you could do, and it'd be very cheap to do, is get this similar material, whatever this is made out of, some kind of plastic, and just make it a shape like this, just just not even like glued together, just a long piece of this plastic just folded. That should be enough to sort of 
protect against this sort of issue. Maybe redo the mount for this thing somehow and make it a little bit more stronger. And I don't know if I just brought this up just now, but another issue with these little stick-on antennas is the adhesive that they use over time, it can take 5, 10, 20 years, doesn't matter. Eventually that adhesive will dry up, this will fall in and it's got exposed metal on it. One of the pads, one of the points is the sort of inner core of that coax and the other one again is the, the outer shielding which could potentially be ground referenced, I don't know. I don't know how they've done it in this thing. But still, um, there's a reason why power supplies have so much sort of no-go zone around them. It's to prevent things like this. You just don't know what the consumer's going to do. You don't know what's going to happen in their house. If you look at like the PS5, the HDMI ports get broken on those, pushed inside the console. They're far away from any mains voltage stuff. And also you have to wonder, is there any issues with interference here? It doesn't look like there is. Everyone says they work fine, but... Yeah, this is just my main worry about this. Everything else about the product looks perfect. It's just this could be a potential, I don't know, depending on what country the guy's in, I think he's in America. Like, if something happened and someone got really hurt or they died, like, who's responsible for that? Is it the responsibility of the person who installed it? Or is it the responsibility of the mounting mechanism and the whole sort of design not being appropriate? for this level of clearance between the primary side and the end user, basically. Yeah, so not ragging on anyone. I'm just sort of putting this out there. Hopefully they see it and hopefully they, I don't know, rectify it or show that it's not going to be an issue. But I honestly, looking at how people treat their devices, even when it's something like this and you know they're going to treat it nicely, if this was installed in, say, just some random customer and... They didn't install it. They bought it from a shop. You know, you just you just can't tell. And it'd be really a shame if someone got hurt from it just because it was a little bit of maybe oversight or something. Anyway, if you like that video, uh, give it a thumbs up. And yeah, I have lots of other videos about modding stuff and things. And just take a look. If there's any sort of products you want me to show off in a video, just leave a comment down below. I don't know. What's the stuff that YouTube people say all the time? I don't know. I'm just doing this as a hobby, really. So, yeah. Until next time, see ya.